I remember four years ago you asked a question. <laughs> well, I hope I have another question. Do you remember what the question was? I think it was something about emotional intelligence. It was, yeah, very good, yeah. Okay, I remember. That's quite a compliment, thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, that's really good. That's really good. Um, <clears throat> so there's different, let's first of all say, there's different types of urgency. I'm in a theater, right? And there's a fire. Get out, there's a fire, there's urgency, right? But you don't wanna live your life with that kind of urgency, okay? The type of urgency I think you're talking about is feeling like this is a competitive world we live in there's a short window between now and retirement or whatever else. I've got to get some stuff done. And yes, you have to hustle. You, have, you got to hustle. Hashtag hustle. You got to go out there and you got to hustle. So yes, but you got to have patience at the same time. So let me give you a quick law here. It's the law of the harvest. You might want to write this down. There are three laws to the law of the harvest. Number one, you sow what you reap and you reap what you sow. That's law number one. Law number two, so you show whatever energy you put out, activity you put out in time, you're gonna get results back, it's gonna grow. Number two is you reap more than you sow. In human nature and in the nature's kingdom, look at it this way. Here, we're in the Northwest. I could take a little seed, and I can put that seed in the ground. I can cover it, and with some sun, with some water, with some nourishment, that little tiny seed, increased returns, will grow into a huge 80-foot fir tree. Here's what I'm gonna say. If you'll continue to take action, you can't help yourself but get results. The life pays in dividends, compound interest. Life is the same way, but you gotta take consistent action, which was brought up earlier. You gotta take, it's gotta be consistent for you. If it's every once in a while, you never get the momentum to take you where you ultimately wanna go. When you have momentum towards something, all of a sudden it's easy, right? Woo. Oh, this is it. Results are coming in. I'm getting phone calls. I'm blah, 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 blah. But when you're dabbing in things, you never get the momentum that you need that will open a lot of doors for you. So number one, you reap what you, 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 reap what you sow and sow what you reap. You get more than you sow. And here's the tough one, especially for Americans. Well, probably for all human beings. But the third one is delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Think about that. Delayed gratification. Here's the, re here's the reality. There is a time between when you start something and when you achieve it. Here's the mystery of life. You don't know when you achieve it if the result will come on the second day or whether the result will come on the 28th day, or whether the result will come five years later. But if you'll stay consistent, all of a sudden, one day, the stars will align. I cannot explain it any clearer than that. If you'll just stay focused, it will come. So, are you putting in the effort that you need to put in on a daily basis? Are you clear about where you're putting your energy on a daily basis, right? These are gonna be questions you have to ask yourself, and you'll get the result, but be okay with the delay. But in between that time, you gotta be taking action. In between the delay, you can't just be watching TV. You can work on secondary and third goals that you wanna to move toward while you're working toward your main objective, right? Because there is a delay in between. That's tough in the world to do. When I wrote, If You Think You Can, um, five years before that, I knocked on the door of Brian Tracy. Went into his office, I happened to meet the guy, I remember when he gave me a tour of his office down in Southern California, Brian Tracy, I was standing there in the foyer 
And this thought came to me, TJ, ask him if he'll endorse your book. Mr. Tracy, thanks for giving me a tour of your office. I've started to write a book. Now at that point, I'd only written a few notes in a journal kind of a thing. <laughs> but I act as if. I act as if. And uh, I said, Mr. Tracy, would you endorse it? He says, I remember he stood there and he was cool, calm and collected and he looked me up and down. And he says, TJ, if you'll write the book, and give it to me if I like it, then I'll give you an endorsement. I was on a euphoric high. I shook his hand, but inside, I was screaming inside. I was like, I got my first endorsement. I'm gonna go write this book like Rocky. I'm gonna have it written in three days. Really? I mean, I went from his front door office to my car without touching ground once. <laughs> I'm telling you. But it wouldn't be five years till five years later that the book actually got done. Why? Because life is full of distractions. And you gotta hold yourself back from being, being distracted. All right, I gave a lot there. All right, we only got a couple minutes. Uh, another question.